Hello everybody, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to name your company. Uh, so naming a company is something I definitely always struggle with. Um, I definitely overthink it a lot and because I overthink it a lot, I've researched all these different strategies on how to name companies and um, I'm going to share some of these strategies with you so that maybe you can determine the right way to name your company or your service or whatever you need help naming. Um, so the first part is a very basic SEO strategy. It, it usually tends to work very, very well, especially if you are, pretty much works anywhere except for a extremely large city like New York City or Miami or San Francisco, but it can still work even if it's a, like, in those cities, more if it's more of like a niche uh, item or service. Um, so more like digital marketing, for instance, in those cities, um, say digital marketing Fort Lauderdale, uh, would probably not work because there's a large saturation of digital marketing companies. In fact, it's one of the most saturated items on the internet. Uh, but if you have a more niche item, say a Reiki massage, then you can call it Reiki Massage Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And that would work really, really well because there's not a lot of competition for that name more than likely. So that's the SEO approach. The reason why you call it the SEO approach is because if people are Googling it, you don't really have to do much to rank at the top. Um, that's because when people are typing in on Google, Reiki Massage Near Me or Reiki Massage uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, you will just naturally pop up. Uh, so that works really, really well for the SEO approach. Uh, the problem with that approach though is that it's hard to scale and expand. So although it gives you a quick boost in starting up your company, it's a little bit harder to expand over time because what if you want to expand to California or Georgia or wherever you may want to go, uh, you will not have the SEO boost anymore and it could end up being very confusing for maybe people in certain areas to spell the word Lauderdale. Uh, if you're maybe not from the area, that could be more difficult to spell, uh, especially online people are renowned for spelling things uh, incorrectly. Um, now the second way that people like to name businesses is through a branding approach. Uh, a usually two to three syllables, um, super easy to remember. So then that way, if people are just in conversation like this, uh, they can then go online and Google it and there's a very minimal chance of it misspelling um, and it works really, really well for maybe a, a highly growth tactic. Um, this would maybe work better if maybe you're a little bit more experienced in business or maybe you just like the idea better. The reason why it would work a little bit better is because if it's easy to remember, um, you can type it in online and you can find it right away. Um, what I thought was really interesting is Neil Patel's Crazy Egg, um, how he named it Crazy Egg and it has nothing to do with being crazy or eggs. Um, it's a heat map and session recording software um, and it's just, it's really, really interesting that it has no correlation to what his company does at all, whether they just named it that or Hot Jar or, you know, Hot Jar crazy egg, two syllables. Um, and also it's usually followed by like some type of a verb as well, like a verb and a noun. So crazy verb, noun, egg, hot adjective or verb. Wait, no, hot. Yeah, that's hot. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I forget my grammar, but it's like a way to describe it. And then you have jar, which is a noun. So usually a action verb, um, with a noun that has a good conjoining of the two. Um, and then there's a third way, which um, is actually my favorite way because I feel like it has a really good longevity of it. Um, it's called the friendliness way. Um, I just gave it that name. Uh, Andrew Carnegie, uh, I read his book, um, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Um, and it was about how he used to name his companies after uh, people that he worked with. And it helped him actually gain more business because it would show that he had a very good relationship with all of his current partners. Partners. And I find that I like that way the most, especially because my business is mostly relationship based. And because my business is mostly relationship based, I want people to know going into business with me that um, I want to have a very strong relationship with them in the future. So I like the Andrew uh, Carnegie approach a lot for maybe relationship based businesses and maybe the branding style for maybe consumer based. Um, obviously because if it's relationship based, you can't really scale it up as quickly and you wanna show that you're a good character to work with. And if it's more consumer based, maybe it would make a little bit more sense um, from the other perspective to have just as many people remember you as quickly as possible. So anyways, um, I hope this video helps and I will see you in the next video.